What's up my producer friends, I'm David with another MonsterProductions.com. My goal with this tutorial is to show you pretty much the minimum of what you need to know in order to actually get in and start making some music inside FL Studio. So if you're brand new to FL Studio and you just wanna basically dive in and figure things out for yourself, there's still kind of some key features that you just need to be aware of. And that's my goal with this tutorial is to show you all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, so when you first load up FL Studio, it should look something like this. There is a chance it's gonna load up a demo project, in which case it might be actually helpful for some of you to look through the demo project, kind of see how they put things together and how FL Studio works. It might actually just be really confusing and overwhelming. So they do have templates in FL Studio, which you can load up. Right now, I just have basically the default template loaded up. If you go up here to the corner, go to file, go to new from template, and then go to minimal. Uh, I have this one, the basic with the limiter. And there are also a ton of other templates that you can go through here. So I recommend you taking a look at that. However, once you have your template loaded up, it should look something like this. And there are five main areas of FL Studio that are gonna be sort of the main point of this tutorial. Before we get into that, there's just a couple things I wanna kinda tweak. This is totally up to you whether or not you wanna actually do this. It's kind of a workflow thing. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and kinda make this a little bit smaller. It's, it's really big, taking up a lot of real estate on the screen. I also wanna go to this area here, which is the playlist, and we're gonna make that full screen. I can exit out of that. I also want to go to this button here, which is our piano roll, and I want to make that full screen as well. So that should help allow us to make music a lot easier. Okay, so the first main thing that I want to talk about is the browser, which is what you see over here in the left side of FL Studio. And this is where you're going to be able to actually browse through different folders on your machine and find different drum samples and load them into your project in order to actually start making some sound. So FL Studio does have some stock drum kits, which we can get to by going into packs, go to drums, and we have some various options to choose from here. Now, I'd really recommend that you go ahead and start building your own sample library. So go out, get some drum kits. There's tons of free ones out there, uh, also really good paid ones. You can also get third-party VST plugins, which work with FL Studio, and those include effects, synthesizers. We'll talk a little bit more about all this stuff later in the tutorial, but in order to help you get started with production, be sure to check the description of this video. I'm gonna leave a link to a Google document, which will have a bunch of different VSTs and then also some free drum samples as well. Now the next area that I want to talk about in FL Studio is called the channel rack and that is this thing that you see here and if you notice we do have some samples already loaded up however we can go into our drum samples let's go into kicks and we'll add a random kick so we can load our own samples in here as well so I can kind of start plotting out a, a groove And then I can kind of go in here and change the volume if I want to as well, to kind of mix these in a little bit better. So that's basically how the channel rack works. You may notice over here we have some numbers and these are linked to the mixer. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second when I get to the mixer. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to the playlist, which is gonna be this button up here. So all of these different buttons here control a different window of FL Studio, which we're gonna be talking about today. So this is the playlist. This is what we're looking at now. This is the piano roll. This is the channel rack, which is what we just talked about. This is the mixer, which is what we're gonna talk about in a little bit. And then this last one is the browser. So you can toggle the browser on or off. So when it comes to the playlist, the playlist is where we're actually going to start arranging the track. And if you don't know what that means, it basically just means this is where we're gonna add all of our different layers and patterns on top of each other to actually start making a full song. So for example, right now I have my pattern one on right here. And that means that when I click, it's gonna put pattern one into this playlist. So I can just kind of paint like that. It's still on pattern up here. So if I go to song mode, it'll start playing the whole song on the playlist. Now, obviously that sounds the same as the pattern because we're only using pattern one right now, but keep that in mind, you need to toggle between song and pattern. So we can scroll through different patterns up here. And remember that correlates to the channel rack. So every time I go to a new pattern, it opens up a new free area inside the channel rack for us to work on. Now, another thing that you can do inside the playlist is you can drag samples directly into the playlist like this. 
And I actually prefer doing it this way for several reasons. I don't really have time to explain all of them, but as you can see, one of the reasons is that it gives you a visual, so you actually have some visual feedback as opposed to just these little dots. These dots represent MIDI, and then this represents the audio. And again, I don't really have time to go into depth between the differences of those, but just know that all your audio samples are gonna be under this tab here. All your MIDI samples are gonna be under this tab here. And then all your automation clips are gonna be under this tab here. All right, so next let's talk about the mixer. That's gonna be this button here. And that's what this looks like here. And if you remember, in our channel rack, we did have these, these things which uh, are linked to the mixer. So each one of these represents a mixer slot. So insert one, two, three, or four. So let's take our kick that we just added and I can link this to five on the mixer. However, I actually prefer clicking it, going into the channel settings, which is this option here, going to this button here and going to root to free mixer track. So what that's going to do is it's going to route it to a free mixer track and it's going to label it for us. So that way we can keep track of what's actually labeled inside the mixer a lot easier. Now we can go in here and right click and rename and color. So I could rename this snare because that's what it is. However, that's a lot more clicks than just routing it directly to the mixer and then it's going to auto name it for us. Now I can also do this directly from the playlist by going to this icon here, going to channel settings, going up to this button here, and then once again, going to root to free mixer track. Once we have our sound rooted to the mixer, I can actually go over here to the right and you see all these open slots. So I can click a slot and I have all these different effects to add onto it. So let's add like an EQ. Now with our EQ, I can add in or take out certain frequencies. So for example, I can take out the low end of this kick. Now we have this other kick, which is layered on it. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And you can hear the difference there. I just took out all the sub bass frequencies of that kick. Now I can click this to mute it. And there are tons of different stock FL Studio effects that you can mess with here. Obviously I don't have time to go through all of them. However, I do have several tutorials on the channel uh, of some of these various plugins. So check that out if you're interested. So the last area or window that I wanna talk about in FL Studio is the piano roll, which is this one here. You may notice that right now we have these little gray dots and that means that right now, because we're in pattern one, the piano roll is linked to the channel rack. So now you see all these drum samples, which are plotted out. They're also showing in our piano roll here. And if I just go to pattern two, then they'll go away because we don't want to overlap or just layer too many sounds and instruments all on the same pattern. So let's go down here to this little add icon. You can also potentially go up here to where it says add and they're going to be the same thing. They'll show up a bunch of generator plugins. So we have like drum machines and then we have some classic synthesizers down here. I recommend going ahead and loading up Flex. This is a really good newer synth that FL Studio released recently and it has tons of different packs you can download and install. And then you can go down here to your tags and find a specific sound that you're looking for. So if you're looking for like keys, um, let's grab this one. And we can actually use our typing keyboard to play some sounds. If for some reason that's not working, just go up here. And one great thing about this plugin is it gives us some macro controls to work with. So each preset is gonna have different macro controls with it. But for instance, this one has like a reverb, a delay, and you can start to mess with those and kind of hear what those effects actually do. So then when you go back into your channel and look at some of these other effects, you have a better idea of what those effects actually do as well. So if we close out of that synth for some reason, I can go back into my channel rack and I can click this button here. It'll reload Flex back up. And then I can actually link Flex to the piano roll by going up here to plug in options and go to piano roll. So now, So I can go ahead and paste a little thing here, go to song mode. And obviously that sounds pretty bad, but at least you get the idea of how you can start building instruments and drums together to make a song. So obviously that's sort of the bare minimum of what you need to know about FL Studio in order to get started, but hopefully this helps get you started, helps get you making some music. Be sure to hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe, 
hit the notification bell. And also, if you want to learn FL Studio a lot quicker, I am offering one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website. So check that out if you're interested, and I will see you guys in the next video.